G'day guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a full in-depth review of the Ford Ranger behind us here. We've been touring around the last five weeks and really testing this Ranger in all sorts of conditions. Snow, extremely steep and windy hills, and we've been towing a three and a half ton caravan the whole time. This car is rated to tow three and a half ton, but today we're going to be looking at can it actually legally tow three and a half ton and if it can actually physically tow three and a half ton. Those two things are very different. So today we'll give our honest opinion if we recommend this vehicle for touring and towing a caravan around Australia. So let's dive in. So under the bonnet here guys, we've got the Duratorque engine. This is Ford five cylinder 3.2 litre engine. It's coupled with a six speed automatic gearbox. This car has 147 kilowasps. I think that's around 190 horsepower and it delivers around 450 Newton meters of torque. So them stats there are quite good. So now we've talked about the engine specs, let's go for a ride in the vehicle and talk about some of the weight specs and towing capacities of this vehicle. Full disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only. And whatever I say in this video can't be used literally against us. All right, so we're in the car now. We're going for a bit of a drive. We've got the caravan on the back. First thing we need to discuss, and this is paramount, is weight. So normally when people are selecting their tow vehicle, they normally already have a caravan or they know what roughly what size caravan they're going to tow. So for us, behind us here, we've got 3.2 ton. I know it's not the three and a half ton that this vehicle's rated at. However, it's still a very heavy van and what I'm about to discuss will tie nicely with why we don't like the Ranger for a tow vehicle. So the curb weight of this vehicle straight out of Ford's box is 2.274 kilograms, so 2,274 kilograms. And I believe that's with half a tank of fuel and one passenger on board. So this vehicle has a GVM of 3.2 ton. Um, so you've got a fairly decent payload certainly a lot bigger payload than most Toyotas, especially Toyota Prados, 200 series, etc. This vehicle is also rated to tow three and a half ton, like I said before. And what we like in a vehicle is if the GVM of a vehicle, gross vehicle mass, plus the towing capacity of that vehicle equals your GCM, meaning you can load your vehicle to GVM with modifications, fuel, supplies, water, to do touring, around Australia and still be able to tow the maximum towing capacity of that vehicle. However, in this case, that is wrong. So the GCM of this vehicle is six ton. So if you want to do the maths on that, if you want to tow three and a half ton, you have to keep this vehicle under 2.5 ton, which is not going to happen, especially when your curb out of the box weight is 2,274 kilograms. So you'd have to pretty much have no modifications um, none of your kids on board, um, you're pretty much pushing it straight out of the box. So this car being able to tow three and a half ton is slightly misleading, which I don't like. Um, and you can see how some people get this calculation horribly wrong. Can this car legally tow three and a half ton? I don't think it really can, um, especially because your GCM is only at six ton. If that was at six and a half ton or even your GVM plus your towing capacity, I would say, hell yeah, it can tow three and a half ton every day of the week, um, no problems whatsoever. So that's the legal side. Can it tow three and a half ton legally? It can't, in my opinion. However, physically, this engine and this car is totally capable to tow three and a half ton. In the last five weeks, we've driven this car around some horrific roads, hills, steep, steepest roads I've ever driven in my whole life um, with three and a half tonne or 3,200 behind us. And this car, this Ranger has eaten it up. Um, on the flats, it sits comfortably uh, at 95, 100 kilometers an hour. And we sit around 2,000 revs and that's in fifth gear. I've only selected in drive. Um, to really test this car out because that's what the average Joe Blow does. He gets in the car, he slaps it into drive and away you go. So you can do it, in my opinion, physically. Um, it can tow three and a half ton. Let's get into the next part, fuel economy and comfort. Into fuel economy and comfort. So Sarah is currently filming right now. Um, and Sarah has a few words about how comfortable this Ranger is when it's towing. In the Ranger, when you're not towing, it is very comfortable. We have no complaints about it. However, once you put the three and a half tons on, you can literally feel everything. Like right now, the tiniest little 
bumps in the road, you're like, you can, you can feel yeah. it. Like it's, it's not very comfortable when you're towing. And to be honest, on the days where we had like a really long drive, by the time we got there, we were actually grumpy because it'd been so uncomfortable. Like you're just sitting here bumping and you can feel everything. Whereas in the Prado at home, it's very comfortable. Keelan was saying it's got independent suspension. No. So this is Leaf <laughs> and then the Prado's obviously got coils. So it's on, on, like straight out of the box, coils are going to be more comfortable over Leafs. But that's um, where our basis is coming from. That's where we've come out of um, and what we're comparing to. So, yeah, that, so we're used to the Prado, which yeah. is like very comfortable. But if you sat in a 79 series Land Cruiser and then you got in the Ranger, you'd probably think the Ranger <laughs> is really luxury. comfortable. So um, it's all perspective there, guys. And um, it's personal opinions. Yeah. All right. So the next thing we'll talk about is fuel economy. So when we first picked this van up, I hit reset on all our clocks. Um, and I know what you're thinking. Clocks um, and fuel economy on the gauge on your dash is not actually um, accurate. You need to go Bowser to Bowser, which is true. And I've done both. So on the on the uh, dash here it's reading 15.3 litres per 100 average so that's not towing and towing we've been seeing numbers of 17 and a half litres per 100 when we're doing 100 kilometres an hour um, through all these windy roads up these really steep hills and I personally think 17 to 18 litres per 100 with 3.2 tonne behind you is quite good um, and that goes back to that point about this car physically can tow three and a half tonne I do not question that at all um, physically and the fuel economy says it all. We're not working the engine that hard at all, um, even up these massive hills. And yeah, it's it's been quite good. And I think that them numbers, 15.3 litres per 100 average over, you know, almost 7,000 K is pretty bloody good. So in terms of fuel economy, um, that is a massive tick for the Ford Ranger. I was expecting much, much worse. And uh, yeah, it's done its job for sure next thing we'll talk about is another crucial thing about touring and that's the vehicle's transmission so like i touched on before under the bonnet we've got a six speed automatic gearbox and this gearbox has done extremely well you could only imagine how hard the torque converter has been working to get this set up up these massive hills we've been towing it in snow um, off-road whatever you can throw at it um, and we've often been going really slow by the time you get to the top of the hill where you know doing 40 k's an hour and we hit the hill at 100 so you could imagine how hard the torque converter is working it's dropping back gears um at some times i'm having to rev the guts out of it to get up these hills there they're not mount they're not hills they're actually mountains um and people from australia that haven't been to new zealand won't actually know what i'm talking about so pretty well the biggest pet peeve we have with the transmission is it hunts gears bad so if this just gets a little sniff of an incline when you're towing um, it drops back and it pretty it's unnecessarily dropping back. Sometimes I find myself doing three and a half thousand revs um, Going up these tiny little inclines that the car could do quite comfortably I think if it had a torque converter lockup kit in it So if you are touring around Australia, I do recommend getting one of those It'll pay itself off in fuel and you'll also be looking after your transmission temperatures and your torque converter temperatures So definitely recommend a torque converter lockup kit so that's the first pet peeve about the transmission. The second is that it holds gears. So if I'm doing, I'm going down a hill and I'm trying to get the Ranger to change up a gear so it revs lower, we save fuel. As, I, as I'm speaking, we go up a little incline, drops back. But I'm going downhill the majority of the time and it's still holding that lower fourth gear. It won't go into fifth, even though we're going downhill and I'm only resting my foot on the accelerator, which is not ideal um, I've actually physically got to take my foot fully off the accelerator to let make it drop down a gear um, and and yeah and obviously there will be people out there thinking oh you slap it into manual mode you'll be able to change through the gears as you want that is fine but in this situation we were testing the car like the average Joe Blow would that doesn't know about transmission temperatures and all that jazz so if you're driving in drive it likes to hold gears um, and doesn't allow you to actually change up save fuel drop your revs back and preserve your temperatures so that's one thing that I don't like about the the Ranger's gearbox um, a lot of the time I'm trying to lock the car up as well so obviously this doesn't have a torque converter lockup kit so I'm manually trying to do that and when we're in fourth gear um, the torque converter majority of the time is unlocked especially because of the hills so when we are driving down the hills that's when I want to lock up that torque converter straight into fifth gear 
and um, look after them temperatures and the longevity of this engine and transmission. So uh, that's one thing I don't like. However, when we're not towing, this gearbox is as smooth as butter. Um, it's a great, a great gearbox. Um, it's chalk and cheese from when you're towing and not towing. And that goes back to the comfort too. When you're not towing, the, the car is very comfortable and um, the transmission is very good when you're not towing as well. So that's another thing that I'll, I'll touch on. So the next thing we'll touch on is the creature comforts of the vehicle. Obviously, if you're touring around Australia, uh, doing long, long trips, whether that be on school holidays, whatever, you're gonna be in the car for a long bloody time. So the creature comforts are crucial. How comfortable this car is to drive, all its um, accessories, gizmos, all that jazz. So it does come with a lot of functions on the dash, which I do like. Um, a lot of it is digital. At the moment, I can have fuel economy, revs, um, and also fuel gauge all on the one side of my dash, and then I can control the entertainment system on the other side, um, which I really like about the Ford Ranger. Um, this particular model doesn't come with Apple CarPlay, but I believe the later Ford Rangers do come with Apple CarPlay. Um, so that's another massive tick for the Ford Rangers. Um, a lot of Toyota, well, I know Toyotas don't come with Apple CarPlay, even 200 series that are worth a lot of money. So that brings us to the next point, which is price. So the Ford Ranger, if you were to buy a secondhand 2017 one, you can pick them up for around 40 grand with 100,000 Ks on the clock, which is pretty good. Considering its tow capacity um, sort of fits the bill for a lot of people. Like not everyone can afford to go out and buy a brand new vehicle worth a hundred thousand um, dollars. So the secondhand market at the moment is booming more than ever. Buy a brand new one, so with no Ks on the clock. And mistake me if I'm wrong, but I did a bit of research, and you get them for around seventy grand, sixty-five to seventy grand, which is pretty good as well for a brand new vehicle. And that's the different engine in that one. So apparently it's better and um, it's a 10 speed transmission. So that in itself as well is pretty good. However, we are reviewing the six speed 3.25 cylinder. So with that being said, I think the Ranger will tick a lot of boxes. Price is very, very competitive. For that reason, that's a big tick for the Ranger. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is reliability. And this one's a big one for people, especially if you're using this car, Ford Ranger to tow around Australia. Um, even if you're not towing, you definitely don't wanna break down on any of the tough tracks like I know for a fact if you break down the Gibb River Road, it's gonna cost you about eight grand to get it, your car um, and set up off the Gibb River back to Derby or Broome or Cudnoe. So that's probably the same for Cape York, um, the Tanami, all these big, um, the Simpson even, massive recovery bills if your car breaks down. So uh, reliability is paramount. Uh, full disclaimer, I'm not one of them Toyota people that think Toyotas are God's gift to uh, humans and every car manufacturing company has their fair share of issues. I'm not saying that's the case, however, I have heard a lot of bad experiences when it comes to Ford Rangers. Um, and another thing I have to discuss, I know Ford Rangers are probably the most popular vehicle you see touring around Australia today, uh, purely because of that price that we just spoke about. And uh, they are nice cars, they are good cars. Um, so you only ever hear the bad experiences out of the hundreds of thousands touring around Australia, you do hear the bad, the bad experiences people have. So a few of the things I've heard are gearboxes letting go after around 60,000 Ks, brand new vehicle, full service history through Ford, um, and gearboxes letting go. I've heard of engines letting go, cracked heads, uh, cracked pistons. I've heard of um, even close mates of mine, um, for example, just vanning it, Derek and Sue, they had a horrific experience with their old Ford Ranger. Um, you can go watch their videos on that. That actually broke down on them a fair bit around Australia um, and cost them a lot of money. Thank God they had RAC and stuff like that, but I've heard these bad experiences. My old man runs a fleet of them. Um, he's told me a few issues they've had in their fleets as well with the Ford Rangers. Um, yeah, so I think personally, they haven't got the best word of mouth that they are the most reliable vehicle on the market. Um, and for me, I've just heard too much smoke for there not to be a fire. So. That's my personal opinion. Like I said, I'm not gonna say that Toyota has, has no issues because we've just spent a week fixing Percy the Prado up. So uh, I'm not saying that at all, but um, yeah, for me, um, that doesn't have a massive green tick next to it. Um, it's sort of a question mark. It's not a cross next to the Ford Ranger. I just think it's a question mark. Um, you've just gotta get unlucky. Some of them last 300,000 Ks, some are going at 50,000, so. Yeah, to summarize guys, we've spoken about the uh, the engine specs, we've talked about the talking about. We've spoken about the weights, we've spoken about the engine towing capacity, reliability, comfort, price, fuel economy, 
Uh, I think that the Ford Ranger has a lot of things going for it. Uh, the price, number one, um, it's affordable for the average Joe Blow. You don't have to win lotto to be able to afford this vehicle. Um, these bad reliability stories I've heard of, you've just got to be unlucky. After driving one for five weeks, it's probably long enough to get a good idea about the vehicle. However, I can't really talk first-hand experience on reliability. And that's probably the biggest thing about a car and choosing a touring vehicle for Australia. So five weeks is purely not enough to make a call on that. Um, for us, it lasted perfectly, no issues whatsoever. The car started every morning, even if it was negative six. I think that it has a lot of things going for it, such as its fuel economy, really good. Blew, blew my mind. I thought we were going to be getting mid-20s with a three and a half ton van, just thinking we were going to be working that five cylinder 3.2 litre. Very hard to tow that big van around these massive mountains, but came in around 17 litres per hundred and that was Bowser to Bowser, so massive tick for that. Massive tick on the price. Comfort of the vehicle, not so good. Um, like I said, not towing is perfect. As soon as you load that leaf pack up with uh, 350 kilos of ball weight, different question. However, like I said, that's all uh, opinionated and that's just because we've gone from a coil vehicle to a leaf vehicle. So, of course, it's going to be less comfortable than a coil. Uh, the tech inside, Apple CarPlay, all that stuff, massive tick. And all around, I think that it can tow three and a half ton physically, but like I said, you'd have to have a bog stock vehicle. No accessories, which these days you barely ever see a bog stock tourer. Um, most of the time, they all have a bull bar or some sort of modification that's going to add weight to the vehicle. So. Given that, I don't think it can legally tow three and a half ton. However, I definitely think physically it can. And uh, yeah, so that's my opinion. I think the Ford Ranger is a great option if you were to tour around Australia. Like I said, I'm a Toyota man through and through, but I'm not one-eyed to the fact that I do see good vehicles um, and I call spades spades. Um, and the Ford Re Ranger is definitely not a dud. I think that if you pick the right one um, and you do some some good maintenance on it you won't have any issues at all tackling some of Australia's hardest tracks and in fact we have seen Ford Rangers on the Gib we have seen Ford Rangers on all the hard tracks that we've done barely ever have we seen them broken down um, and yeah that's my honest opinion on the Ford Ranger would we personally buy one I wouldn't only because of that question mark around reliability like I said it's not a cross and it's not a tick it's a big question mark um, and you've got to get unlucky so for us we will be upgrading the caravan at the end of the year so we are in the market for a new four-wheel drive with a bigger towing capacity than Percy the Prado with the two and a half ton. So for us, we're actually doing our research now um, and the Ford Ranger is very appealing purely because of that tow capacity um, and it's still quite affordable too. So with all that being said, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's made it slightly more easy for you to make a choice. Um, yeah, I've tried to be as least biased as I can and like I said, I am a Toyota man. I've only owned ever Toyotas. Um, however, driving this Ford Range, an absolute treat, nothing went wrong um, and it was a, a really good vehicle to tow that big van. So yeah, like I said, I hope this has made it easier. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure you subscribe. A fair few hours has gone into it, especially the research because I knew nothing about Ford Rangers. So yeah, make sure you subscribe, um, like, drop us a comment as well. Would you buy a Ford Ranger? And give us your opinion down below. And yeah, hopefully I haven't pissed off any Ford Ranger owners. <laughs> Thanks guys, um, and we'll see you in the next episode. Yoo!